Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, the complete edition for your Nintendo Switch. Now this game just released, and it's available both in a physical version and on the eShop for $39.99 US or your regional equivalent. By the way, since this game does have a physical release, I'll be leaving Amazon affiliate links down below if ever you do want to pick up the game. Now don't forget that if you're watching this review and you like what you see, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now this Plants vs. Zombies game has nothing to do with the origins of the series, which was a tile-based strategy game for mobile phones. Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville is like a fusion between Splatoon and Overwatch. Now what I mean by that is that the gameplay mechanics, the character designs, and even the gameplay modes seem to be very strongly influenced by Overwatch. However, the cartoony aesthetics and the overall feel of the game does evoke a lot the feeling that you get when you are playing Splatoon. Now, Plants vs. Zombies isn't only an online game. There is a single player mode, but I'll be honest, there isn't that much there. Basically, the single player mode is simply there so that you can learn the mechanics behind the game and test out all the different characters that are available to you. However, the single player mode isn't without a purpose, because if you do play through it and you go through the different objectives, you will at least start leveling up your characters based on the XP that you get there. And what does add a little bit of interest to this mode as well is that if you play the online version, you will see other characters going through the progression and basically meeting up with you in the overworld. And although I do recommend that most people do spend some time in the single player campaign just to get a feel for the game, it is totally optional and you can jump directly into the multiplayer version of the game. And the multiplayer experience is really where all this game really does come together. And I would say that most people will spend over 99% of their time in the multiplayer format. Now, just in case some people out there are worried, although I did compare this to Overwatch in Splatoon, I just want to let you know that the multiplayer in this game is really designed as a casual overall experience. So although the modes are competitive, they're not designed in a really deep competitive way. They are really designed so that anyone can pick up a controller and have tons of fun with all the gameplay modes. Now, the actual gameplay mechanics will vary a lot depending on who you decide to play as. However, all the characters are divided into three overarching gameplay styles. Either you will be able to choose an offensive focused character, a defensive focused character, or lastly, a support class character. Now, generally, each character will be equipped with at least three abilities set on different refresh timers. And success in the game will depend a lot on learning each different character's gameplay style and overall the proper way to cycle and use their abilities. Now one thing that I'm really loving about Plants vs. Zombies is that there are a ton of unlockables in the game. Whether it be visual upgrades or even new characters and gameplay modes. However, it is all done through in-game currency. There are no microtransactions necessary. Also, each character is equipped with seven ability points that you can yourself customize so that your character overall has the gameplay style that you choose. However, these different abilities are exactly the same for each character. So eventually you are probably going to get into a groove where you know which abilities you use for your offensive characters, your defensive and your support characters, and they'll all end up pretty much going along with the same overall design. Now this is something that ideally I would have liked to see different upgrade paths per character, but overall it's a minor gripe and an overall pretty good experience. Now earlier I did mention that this game has a overall casual design, and although in the end I did appreciate that, there are a few bad things that it brought along with it. Now the emote or communication system in this game is very very simple. What unfortunately that brings along is that if everyone in your team doesn't know what they're supposed to be doing, it's very hard to get everyone on the same page. Also, in some matches, you'll probably eventually encounter some serious balance issues, because basically when you're dropped into a match, everyone gets to choose whichever character they want to play as. If everyone on your team decides to choose a offensive geared character, no one takes any defense or support, 
If you're facing a balanced team on the other side, you will most likely get steamrolled. Now, the good news is that every time you die, you can decide to respawn as a different character. However, if no one in your team catches on on which characters are needed for to win a specific match, well, unfortunately, the problems will just continue on and on. And the reason the game works that way is because of its casual overall design. They don't want to force people into roles that they're not used to or to play characters that they aren't comfortable with. Now, a quick way to solve this is to you yourself learn at least one character in each category and to be able to adapt on the fly to really help out your team in the way it needs. But as I said earlier, because of its casual overall design, don't expect most people to pick up on that. And unfortunately, some matches, you'll just get steamrolled. Now, performance wise, Plants vs. Zombies actually plays really well on your Nintendo Switch, whether it be in docked or in portable mode. However, it is locked at 30 FPS. I would have liked to see 60 FPS to have a better overall experience and a better overall control feeling from the game, but at the same time, it works for the system. I just want to throw it out there for everyone. This is not a 60 FPS game. Now, there is one technical point that I just wanted to mention about this game that is actually quite exciting for the Nintendo Switch, and that is the fact that this is the first ever game to use the Frostbite engine on the Nintendo Switch platform. And the fact that the Frostbite engine actually runs this well on the Nintendo Switch system is overall an awesome thing because it opens the doors to a whole new plethora of games that could possibly come into the Switch in the near future. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we actually get to the verdict on this game is the online viability of this game. So far, I bought this game yesterday on its release date and I played for over seven hours in two days. So if that gives you a hint, I think I've been liking this game quite a bit. And right now, finding a match is actually quite easy. I've never waited more than 30 seconds to be paired up for a match. So the online community seems to have come out very strong for Plants vs. Zombies for the moment. However, a game like this does have one serious drawback. It's that the long-term viability of the online community will all depend on how many people jump aboard and keep playing this game for a while. Now, I have no doubts that the unlockables in the game will keep people here for at least a month or two. I personally am really, really hoping that this game stays alive for way longer than that and that EA might throw in a little extra support with a couple of updates here and there to really keep the community going. However, this being an older game with no microtransactions, I am scared that the developers of the game are going to set it aside as a one-off for the Nintendo Switch. But if the online community, and this is sort of half a call to action, if the online community stays active on this game, we might be able to get quite a decent life cycle out of it. Now we get to the verdict of the game. And if this is the first review of mine that you're watching, I don't give a numerical score, I give an overall statement on whether you should buy the game or not. If you want to see what all those statements are, they're available down below right in the description of the video. And to me, Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville is a definite pickup. Now, although Plants vs. Zombies wasn't made with the Nintendo Switch in mind originally, it doesn't feel that way. Because this game is lends itself perfectly to the system and also the overall community. Because overall, a lot of Switch players are more on the casual side, or at least enjoy a casual experience from time to time. And Plants vs. Zombies is that perfect mix. I was waiting for a game like this for quite a while. A game that I could get into, but not be stressed out when I'm doing a match. Do I love Apex Legends? Yes, I do. But it does put a little bit of pressure on you when you're playing. Pressure I don't get from Plants and Zombies. I just get pure fun. And overall, that's why I'm giving it the verdict that I did. So that's pretty much it for my review of Plants vs. Zombies. Now, I'd like to hear from all of you down in the comments. Are you going to pick this game up or maybe did you pick it up already? And don't forget, as I said earlier, if you like this content or you want to support the channel, please hit the like button. It's the best way to help out. Also, subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my future contents come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.